Right. So we're going to play off of a couple of people for us and talk about the ministry and the life of John the Baptist to help us prepare for the coming of Christ. Um, service today, those of you online, make sure you post your prayer requests. We'll get to those in a little bit. Let's stand and join together in a song uh, that we're looking forward to the coming of Christ. So come up, come Emmanuel. Blessings on your worship today. morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, each day is a gift of your grace. Mercy you every morning. Guide our steps by the light of your word. Shield us from harm and keep us from evil. Better than life is your love. Put joy in our hearts and praise on our lips. Hallelujah. We pray together. Heavenly Father, we have come to worship you. Draw near to us in your gracious word, and assure us of your loving kindness. Curb our wandering thoughts, that we may hear your voice and sing your praises. Open our hearts by your spirit, that we may believe in Jesus, and grow day by day in your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Weird is going on. The people, well, you know, Advent theme, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and Lincoln just knew that. Lincoln knew that, and he's illustrating. No. Okay. I don't, what are we doing here? Page five. Top of page five. All right. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love him and serve him as his dear children. We have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. 
Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. Jesus says to his people, you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. His death paid for the guilt of your sins and the sins of the whole world. Do you believe this? Yes, I believe. Because of the promise of our Savior Jesus, I pronounce to you that your sins are forgiven. Be assured that you are a dear child of God and an heir of eternal life. Amen. O Lord, my God, I thank you for the love you have shown me in Jesus Christ, my Savior. Let me live in peace of forgiveness. Help me fight against temptation, correct whatever wrongs I can, and serve you and those around me with love and good works. In Jesus' name I pray. And in the joy of, the, of forgiveness, we join in the song of Thanks to the Lessons for today talk about a little bit about John the Baptist. And our first one is a prophecy from the book of Malachi. Uh, Malachi was the last book of the Bible written. And the rabbis and the teachers of the law recognized, they said, that the spirit went silent after Malachi. They knew that the Savior of the world, the promised Messiah, was going to come. Malachi, his last chapter talks about the fact that God is going to send Elijah. Elijah, we're going to talk a little bit about Elijah. Elijah had died hundreds of years earlier. It wasn't actually Elijah who was going to come, but someone in the spirit of Elijah. We know him as John the Baptist. We're going to hear that the message of John the Baptist is a serious one. I know it's Christmas. Supposed to all be filled with joy and warm and fuzzy. John the Baptist's message was harsh. And we're going to study that a little bit today. All right. So Malachi chapter four, prophecy of the coming of John the Baptist. Surely the day is coming; it will burn like a furnace, 
All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them, but for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its, in its rays. You will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day the Lord of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and I will strike the land with total destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God says you better take John the Baptist's message seriously. <coughs> Probably we should too. Amen. Amen. So, next lesson, we have the announcement of the birth of John the Baptist. A special announcement, special birth. Luke chapter 1. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right hand of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take any wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent. And not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next hymn, not one that we sing real often, not one that's very well known, but it's about the ministry of John the Baptist. We stand and join together on, on Jordan's Bank of Baptist. <laughs>
bow our heads and we say a prayer. Lord God, be with us today as we study, as we meditate, as we prepare to celebrate your birth. Lord God, by your spirit, by your word, shape us, fashion us. Uh, give us the right attitude today, Lord God, in our, in our approach. Help us to understand uh, what it all means, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, I think we all know that Christmas is about more than the gifts that are under the tree, right? Yeah. And we all know that it's more than the food that you eat on Christmas, although those, both of those things are pretty important, right? You got, you got to have the food, and it's nice to have the gifts, right? We all know that there's more meaning to it than all of that. And, and I don't think any of us would make the mistake of equating the celebration of the birth of Jesus with the gifts and the gathering and, and, uh, and the food that we eat. But I wonder sometimes if we, if we really celebrate that aspect of Christmas, the deeper spiritual aspect of Christmas, with the same enthusiasm that we do the rest of it. I don't think on Black Friday I spent a whole lot of time thinking about the birth of Jesus Christ or my salvation that he won. I spent a lot of time uh, running around getting tires on my car because they had a great sale. Right? <clears throat> How do we make sure that the celebration of Jesus' birth doesn't, doesn't get... Uh, overwhelmed by all the things that we know aren't the deeper things, the real meaning of Christmas? How do we, how do we take the time to ensure that not only is, our, uh, is Christmas a blessing to our family relationships and our time together and maybe not a blessing to our waistline, but and remember that this is something that has such a greater, deeper, more profound meaning. You don't see it a whole lot in society. Maybe you get it on your Facebook page or something else like that. Someone will send you something. But it has to be something that each one of us takes the time and purposely infuses into all the things that we do at Christmas. Are you following me? And I think John the Baptist has some thoughts for us. Like I said earlier, John the Baptist was sent to prepare the people of God for the coming of the Messiah. His whole job was to get everyone wound up and ready to recognize the fact that the Savior of the world, the Messiah that they had been waiting for for generations, had finally come. He was, he was to prepare the way for the Lord, so to speak. And so it makes sense that during Advent, this, this season of the year, that we would think about the message of John the Baptist. A lot of times this time of year, the readings that are normally assigned, the hymns that are sung, reflect John the Baptist and his ministry. And so this Christmas, we're going to take a look at John's life, understand his message, and maybe infuse into our celebrations something greater and deeper and more meaningful. And we're going to do it by mimicking Oprah. I've never seen an episode. I saw like two minutes of it on, on a YouTube video this last week, but I've never seen it. But I think everyone's sort of familiar with, with Oprah's Christmas special, right? I guess she tapes it in July. No one knows that it's coming. Shows up, right? And she's going to give to everyone in the audience her favorite things. And she has a list of 35 of her favorite things. And she talks about how great it is. And she gives it to everyone in the audience, right? You get a loofah, and you get a loofah, and you get a loofah, and you get a car, and you get a car, and you get everything. It's, like, it's her favorite things. These are the things that she found that she thinks have great quality and really cool and neat things. You know, the Baptist has his own list. And maybe it's not as exciting as Oprah's list. 
but I think it's got a lot more meaning to you and me who celebrate the birth of Christ. Today, the gift that John the Baptist has given to each one of us, you get one, you get one, is a camel's hair shirt. You get a camel's hair shirt, and you get a camel's hair shirt, and you get a camel's hair shirt. I tried to figure out what exactly a camel's hair shirt was, and nobody really knows. I mean, they think they know. It's not leather with the hair still on it. This is probably, they would shave the camel. Imagine the one doing that. I mean, how, how did the camel look after you shaved it? Whatever. It doesn't matter. Shave the camel, or you cut the hair off. And you somehow weave it into this fabric or into this thread and you make a, a shirt out of it. And John the Baptist wore a camel's hair shirt. Why? Why would he wear such a ridiculous thing? We're going to read it in just a minute. He wore a camel's hair shirt, a leather belt. He ate locusts and wild honey. I think he's reflecting, he's connecting himself to a long line of Old Testament prophets like Elijah we hear Reed had the same sort of attire and the same sort of lifestyle. A little bit of a wild man living out in the wilderness. I think it also gave attention to his message. People listened to him because, you know, who's this guy? Out in the desert, dressed all weird. But I think it had a lot to do with his message. When I was a boy, both of my grandparents, I blame my, my mom because I think it's her fault. Both of my grandparents would give me a wool sweater every Christmas. Remember those old wool sweaters? Not like the nice ones today, you know, that are nice and soft. These ones uh, were filled with thorns or something. I don't know what it was. How, how many of you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All the, all the, all the older generations know all these things. But you get one of these and my mom thought they were great. Oh, you look so cute. And then you put on your church dress pants and your nice shoes and you put on another shirt. And then you put, put this wool shirt over top. And the, yeah, and it had the ability to poke through the shirt that was underneath. <laughs> right? And she was just, uh, uh, you're sitting there in church and just, uh, right? Oh, I hated them. I hated them. But I get them every Christmas. I get a wool sweater. Itchy, uncomfortable. I think a camel's hair shirt is worse. Right? And that's what John the Baptist gives to you today. And it's a reflection of the message that he preached. What is his message? Mark chapter 1. This is what is written. You'll find it on page 9 in your program. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey, and this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You see it? He was preaching repentance for the forgiveness of sin. He said, one will come after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am unworthy to untie. Repentance. I know that repentance maybe isn't the first thing that we think of when it comes to Christmas time. But when we stop and remember that the whole reason that Christmas happened in the first place was because you and I have not always been the people that God would have us be. It's appropriate. Repentance. It starts with a sorrow. It starts with a humility. 
recognition that I have not been what God would have me be. I haven't been the husband that I should be. I haven't been the father that God would have me be. I haven't been the Christian, human, pastor that God would have me be. That God has put people in my life and I have ignored them and I have not loved them and I have abused them. God puts me in a position to let my light shine, and sometimes that light is what? Not so bright. Recognition that even though I am blessed, I still find a thousand reasons to whine and complain and moan and gripe. That I have been selfish in my life. I not live for others. I have fallen short. Repentance. The humility, the sorrow that recognizes the fact that I'm not as righteous and holy and wonderful as I like to claim to be. Amen? Amen. The reality is <clears throat> that because of our sin, we deserve nothing. We can expect nothing good. We have no right to demand anything good from God. That's where it starts. Maybe, maybe there is value this Christmas season in taking a little bit of time to stop, to humble ourselves, to recognize that I am not as God would have me be, to put on a camel's hair shirt, to be uncomfortable. I recognize that I have sinned. To be guilty. Because I know that I haven't always been what God would have me be. Amen? Amen. But repentance has two parts. A lot of times we only focus on the first part, and that's the sorrow, and that's the misery. But repentance is a lot more than that. My favorite part of wearing those itchy wool sweaters uh, was what? <coughs> Taking it off. There was much joy and celebration when you would take that sweater off and you're like, oh. <laughs> Repentance starts with a sorrow, but it ends with rejoicing. It's like the confession of sins that we went through just a moment ago. When we went to the Lord God and said, I recognize, Lord God, that I have not been as you would have me be. But then we announce, we hear the announcement from the Lord God Almighty that he has taken what? All of our sins away. That's, that's part of repentance too, is standing up confident, absolutely certain that my sins have been taken away, that I am loved by God, that heaven is my home. It starts with humility and sorrow and it ends with rejoicing. It ends with being lifted up. It ends with celebration. That's coming. Right? To take off the camel's hair shirt and to celebrate the fact that my sins are forgiven, that even though I haven't lived as God would have me live, every single bit of that has been paid for by Christ Jesus. The whole reason he was born in Bethlehem. Not so that I could put a tree in my house. It was so that he could come and take my place on the cross and claim me as his own. And take away every single one of my sin. And I stand now today not wearing a camel tail shirt, but the robe of Christ's righteousness. I stand before God. I don't know what it's made out of. But it's a good shirt. It's a nice shirt. It's a comfortable shirt. The shirt that makes you happy because you know that when God looks at you he doesn't see the camel's hair he sees Jesus you are forgiven you are washed clean repentance sometimes I think we think of repentance too narrowly we 
you think of its most obvious yeah. form, the confession of sin, where I say, I'm sorry, God, and God says, I forgive you. But it's much more than that. It's a whole lifestyle. It's an attitude. It's a frame of mind where I look at my life and I'm constantly humbled by the fact that God has blessed me, even though I didn't deserve it. It's a frame of mind where I look at my life and I recognize that I am blessed beyond compare. And not only that, I am favored by the Lord God Almighty. It is a daily process mindset that we go through where we recognize the fact that I am blessed of God. Though I did not deserve it, I am forgiven and claimed by him. Heaven is my womb. Maybe as we start off Christmas season, the celebration of the birth of our Savior, we walk through the tempest, the humility, the lowliness, the recognition that maybe I haven't always been what God would have me be, but that God loves me anyway. Because here's the thing. Repentance is not something that I do. It is something that God gives me. Repentance is an act of the Holy Spirit working on my heart and changing and shaping me into his child. It is a gift that God gives by the power of the word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not a process that I do. I participate. But it is the power of the Spirit that does it. And sometimes we get Christmas wrong. Christmas is a season of giving. This Christmas is a season of giving. Yeah. But first and foremost, it is a season of receiving. Where God gives us his son. God gives us salvation. God gives us faith in him. God gives us the greatest gifts of all. And you and I say what? And the gift that God has given to you and me today is a camel's hair shirt. And it is good for us to put on once in a while. But boy, is it fun to take off. To humble ourselves before the Lord God and then to celebrate our forgiveness. You get a camel's hair shirt. You get a camel's hair shirt. And you get a camel's hair shirt. And you get to take it off. And you don't have to wear it anymore. But maybe it's good for us to get a camel. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and join together in our next hymn. It is Rock of Ages.
continue with our prayers for today. Prayers have been requested for uh, Joe, who fell and broke his toe. Uh, this is Deb's father. We'll give thanks to God for the recovery. Um, pray that the Lord will continue to bless him. Uh, for Carmen, Walter's mother, uh, continues to struggle with health. Pray for peace there. There's a little bit of uh, uh, uncertainty there, so we'll pray for some peace. For Alejandro Walters, who's suffering from pneumonia. For Sue Holt, who's recovering from cancer surgery. Uh, for Dorothy, Ted's wife, who's not who's struggling with her MS, right? Just exhausted, so we'll pray for strength. Uh, we pray for the residents of the village of Kabazala, Uganda, uh, who's threatened with floods. We'll remember them in prayer. We remember Ted's friend Randy, who died of a heart attack. Pray for that family. Uh, anniversaries, the Todds and the Castros, and birthdays, Carlito, Syria, Kayla, and Tracy, all are celebrating birthdays this next week, so we'll remember them in prayer. Are there any other prayer requests today? Yes, Deb. Um, prayer for Thanksgiving for all of you. So Thanksgiving for good results, is that what we're praying for? Yeah. Yeah. And you, yes. I have two. Um, you only get one. There was, a, there was a bus accident in our school district on Friday. So um, grief and uh, wipe away anxiety that has not been created. And then also um, for uh, godly knowledge this week and dealing with uh, two situations that have happened. Yeah. Yes, Laura. Uh, we've got Allie's birthday this week. Oh. And um, for my continued healing for my dad, he's making good progress, but um, yeah, just he's in rehab. And he, well, within a week, he made it out of ICU. He's coughing significantly um, and is in rehab now. Good. So prayer of Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Is there a prayer request today? Anything online? Uh, prayers for some uh, difficult things in life with work, with uh, the rental property that she has. Prayers for common strength. We'll remember her in prayer. Let's stand and join together and go to the Lord God. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the day, for sending your Son to be our Savior, for sending him to be born in Bethlehem, to bear our sins, to open the gates of heaven for us. And this Christmas, pray, Lord God, that you would bless our celebration. Help us to remember, Lord God, that the whole reason we came is because we have not. Lord God, give us a humble heart, uh, but also then lift us up with your forgiveness and with your love, Lord God. Come to you with some special prayers, and we commit uh, them to you, Lord God, and ask for your blessing on them. Uh, we think of those who are going through some difficult times, some challenging situations. And we pray, Lord God, for calmness, for strength, uh, for peace, for guidance, and for knowledge. Pray that you would pour out your spirit on your people and bless them. Uh, when we think of Maria, pray that you would be with her as she goes through some stressful things. Pray that you would guide her and direct her. Uh, pray, Lord God, for Courtney, that you would be with her and make her wise as she's going through some difficult uh, situations, Lord God. Uh, bless her with your spirit. Pray that you would be with those who were affected by the bus accident in Fort Morgan. Pray, Lord God, that you would calm hearts. Uh, pray that you would heal those who are hurt. Pray that you would be with all of them, Lord God, and grant them your spirit. Pray, Lord God, for, um, for Carmen and her mother. Pray, Lord God, that you would bring peace to that relationship and to that family. Bring calmness as they go through different changes and shifts in life. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless both of them, and especially Carmen you would strengthen her and give her peace. We also bring to you, Lord God, all those who are going through health issues, and we pray, Lord God, for healing. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless those who are struggling, that you would uh, guide doctors and nurses and treatments, Lord God. 
give you thanks for the healing that you have given to our brother Joe. Pray that you would continue to bless him and strengthen him and help him. Pray, Lord God, that you would bless Alejandra and uh, heal her of pneumonia. Strengthen her, Lord God. We thank you for, uh, for the recovery uh, that you have given to our sister Sue. Pray that you would continue to strengthen her as she recovers from cancer surgery, Lord God. Be with her and bless her. Pray with Dorothy that you would strengthen her, uh, lift her up, um, uh, heal her, Lord God, as she goes through things. Pray, Lord God, that you would be with our sister. Um, pray uh, for Lori's dad. Thank you for the healing that you have granted to him. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bless him. Pray that he would come out of the hospital soon. We give you thanks, Lord God, for good results that you have given to our sister Deb. Pray that you would continue to keep her healthy and safe. Uh, thank you for those results, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those in Uganda who are being threatened with flooding. Pray that you would keep them safe from harm, that you would spare life. Even more, Lord God, pray that you would lift up their eyes and their hearts to you to know that you are with them and that you will not leave them. Lord God. We also give you thanks for the gift of a grandson that you have given to Sue. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bless family there. Um, grandson, grandma, mom, Lord God, be with that family. Um, pray for the family of Randy who died this last week. Pray that you would comfort them with the knowledge of eternal life and your love and your forgiveness, Lord God. Uh, use family and friends to point them to your cross, to the empty tomb, to the promises that you have made, and that you would bring them comfort, Lord God. We give you thanks for the years of life that you have given to Carlito and Syria, to Kayla, Tracy, and Allie. Pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bless them with many more years. Open their eyes to see your blessing. Open their hearts to trust your promises, Lord God. And we bring to you finally those who are celebrating anniversaries, and we give you thanks for their love, for their commitment to each other. We think of the Todds and the Castros, we pray, Lord God, that you would continue to bind them together in love, that you would make them one as you are one, Lord God, and give them many more years. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We prepare ourselves to receive Christ's body and blood to read responsibility. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. Rejoice in the Lord always. Say it again, rejoice. God gave his son as an atonement for all our sins. Not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Thank you, the Lord, and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. We pray. Lord, our sin separates us from you. We need your forgiveness. We need your love. Through this supper, pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Make us one in Christ, united with him and united with one another. Forgive our sins, lift up our hearts, inspire us to love as you have loved. Bless us through this supper. In, in Jesus', Jesus name, name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Join in the verse.
Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given to you. And this is your name. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. This time I invite forward all those who are prepared to receive Christ's body and blood. We'll start with the musicians and their family. This is the body of the Lord, given into death for all of your sins. We drink. This is the blood of the Lord, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. I take peace with God. Our sins are forgiven. <coughs> This is the body of the Lord. This is the body of the Lord.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and keep you in the true faith and life everlasting. serve the Lord with joy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his face. And give you his peace. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning.
Before we sing our last song, take a moment to greet the people around you, shake their hands, get to know each other a little bit. Good morning. Good morning. events going on uh, and need some help just setting up and taking down and things like that. Saturday we have our annual craft fair. Uh, we usually have three, four, or five hundred people walk through our doors just getting people onto the campus so that they get to see us a little bit. We could use some help afterwards. So our craft show ends at three and it takes us about an hour to set everything back up again. We use as many people as we can here Saturday at three o'clock. Uh, this, this is where the craft show is. We have to set it up at church. We'd love to have you welcome that. Also, then on Sunday afternoon, we do something called Advent by Candlelight for the ladies. Uh, they meet in here, have a little Bible study, devotion, worship, and some fellowship. And we have Advent by Firelight for the men. We'll have a fire out in the parking lot. Men, we are here to help the ladies set up ahead of time and take down afterwards and then enjoy some fellowship out in the parking lot as well. Um, times for all for the help is listed in the program. If you look at the back, there's the schedule for the week, December 10th. Set up at 5. Okay, I'd love to have you here to help set up at 5. Does that sound good? We should have time, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. And then uh, set, up the, set up the church back up again at 8. Okay. Anything you want to mention on that, Gretchen? Well, the Advent by um, Candlelight is desserts and drinks. Okay. So everybody knows it's don't eat dessert at home. <laughs> don't eat the dessert at home? <laughs> don't eat desserts at home. Oh, don't eat desserts at home. Bring them. Yeah. But also something, uh, you're welcome to invite people to attend. So there's this flyer in there, has the information on it. Invite your neighbors, your family, your friends. I'd uh, love to have them come. This is not just for us. It is an opportunity to reach out as well. Okay. So take this home with you, and if there's someone that you might want to invite, we'll share it with you. Okay? Anything else on that? Yes, Ted, you want to comment on that? Not on that. Okay. On Friday, if somebody's available, I need a ride to uh, a doctor's appointment. Uh, Dorothy's getting worn out, and she does do night driving with the MS. Uh, my appointment's at 4 30, so that goes on us around 4. If anybody can help, I appreciate it. Um, speak with Ted, speak with me. Yes. I want to send you a shout out to you. That was an instrument for helping me with the hit guard yesterday for the golf day. Right. I couldn't have done it without him. <laughs> um, yes. There's a new forward in Christ. And I'd like to mention two things. Right. There are um, five different Advent devotions for each Sunday of Advent in the cathedrals here. So, and they are really nice. You might want to take a copy so that you could do that. And then the other thing is that I found this so interesting. Pastor David Sharp does Q&A. And this time his Q&A is, why is Pontius Pilate immortalized in our creeds? And it, it's actually, there's a very good reason. So you might want to read that other, and other good ones too. <laughs>
The funny thing about Pontius Pilate is that in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, he was a saint. There was a saint there called Saint Pontius Pilate. Isn't that weird? Uh, any other announcements? Yes, Paul. If anybody's looking for a new electric ghost light, it's the abandoned you replaced them. Right. So if you have need of an electric dryer, have you given it away? <laughs> Maybe. In exchange for some Christmas cookies, you'll give it to you. I'm sorry, I'm putting words in your mouth and I should not. I Anything else that we need to announce? Bible class Sunday school to follow. Love to have you all stay. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, if you are a member or a visitor and you're not getting an email on Fridays, please reach out to my email under here, admin, and message me and let me know your email so I can get that out to you. I want to make sure everybody's on the list. And then, um, as always, go on Instagram and Facebook and promote the craft fair. Even if you just click like on it, that helps the algorithms. So please share the posts for Advent by Candlelight and the craft fair on those social medias. Like it or share it. I don't know how all that works, but do those things because it really helps reaching out into our community, okay? It's an easy way to do things, right? Anything else? Pastor, yes. we're starting right. Christmas program practice today. That's right. So if your kids are going to be in it, stay yeah. please. So Christmas preparation, <laughs> Christmas program preparation begins today. Uh, during Bible class hour, are you guys going to be in here today? Probably in one of the classrooms. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if your children are going to participate in our Christmas program, uh, they're they're welcome to stay. Even if you haven't told Erin yet, right? You're working right. that out today. Yep. Uh, find Erin and she'll tell you where to go. Sure. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and women's Bible. Okay. There's a women's Bible study starting up in January. There's a little QR code in there. You can see that. There's a book that you're going to buy. It's going to be a bi weekly. Is that the way you say that? Once every two weeks? Once every two weeks? Bi weekly? Bi monthly? Bi Every, okay. every other week. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah, so if you're interested in that, uh, talk with Christine. She's the one who's going to be uh, leading that effort. I'd love to have all you ladies join us for that Bible study uh, starting in January. Nope, I'm not. All right, let's stand and join together in our closing hymn. Go now in peace.